Um, well, I'm going to talk about um, various aspects of uh, suicide and self-harm in young people. So that's in children and adolescents and very young adults. And uh, I'm going to talk about the, the extent of the problem, uh, both of suicide and self-harm. And certainly in the United Kingdom we have a growing problem, uh, particularly of self-harm in girls, uh, and particularly young teenage girls. I'm then going to talk a bit about the factors that seem to be uh, associated with the problem, in other words, causes of the problem and other associated factors. Um, and then a bit about um, the longer term implications of self-harm in young people. Uh, I'm going to say a bit about um, treatment and prevention. And then finally, I'm going to talk about the impact of self-harm on uh, on, on families, so where young people, uh, say teenagers, are self-harming, the impact on their parents and other family members. So you've done a lot of research on this topic. Um, can you tell some of the newest uh, results, uh, conclusions you have? Well, I mean, we've done. We've we've we for many years have been um, collecting data on uh, self-harm, mainly focused on young people who come to hospital after an episode of say self-harm, so say an overdose or uh, self-cutting or some other form of self-harm. Um, and uh, we follow these people up over time so we can see whether they repeat their self-harm and uh, uh, so on. Um, <clears throat> we've done a, quite a lot of work on uh, the factors that may cause self-harm. Um, uh, and then more recently we've been particularly looking at uh, the impact on families and what we've been doing is interviewing parents who've ha got young people who've uh, got uh, sons or daughters who've self-harmed and asking them about the impact, you know, about discovering the self-harm, uh, the impact it's had on the family, uh, how they dealt with it, um, advice for clinicians about how they can help the young people and, and emphasizing the fact that parents want to be involved in, in, in helping and uh, can provide good advice. Um, and we've used this information to develop websites, a, web, a big website for, uh, that anybody can access. Um, obviously it's in English, uh, people talking in English. Uh, and also um, uh, written guides. Um, uh, that, to, that can be given to parents, uh, for example, if somebody goes to hospital after a self-harm episode and, and so they, the parents can have written advice, they can get it online, but we, we also believe in giving hard copies of that to, uh, to people. And final question, where do you see the future, where do you see uh, suicidal and self-harm in young people, Where's, where are we going? Well, I mean, the obvious main developments are around um, electronic communication. Um, uh, what can be, well, first of all, what are the dangers, um, uh, say, of social networking, uh, access to internet sites that may promote self-harm, which is a real problem in young people, uh, the sort of contagious effects of self-harm that you can get through the media. Uh, and investigating that further and trying to work out what can be done to reduce those impacts. But on the other side, looking at um, how uh, prevention and therapy can be delivered electronically, um, particularly through apps or other means, to try and get access particularly to young people who say don't want to go to see a doctor or a nurse or whatever, who, who might be able to, you know, what can be done in the way of self-help for, for young people.